Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond and in this episode I'm taking a look at Claim Kingdoms by Scott Alms with fantastic illustrations by Mihajlo Dmitrievsky, published by White Goblin Games. And this is a card laying game for two to four players where you're constantly putting new cards on the table and trying to get the majority of claims on those cards and things change as you play. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. I'll set up a game, explain the rules, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So let's take a look at the box. Claim Kingdoms with great artwork on it, with all the factions. It's pretty cool. And on the back, you can see the game in play with the components and a bit of a text explaining what the game does. Ages 8 and up, 30 minutes, 2 to 4 players by White Goblin Games. Right, let's open up the box. And it's a relatively big box for what you get in it because all you get are some punch boards with tokens and I believe there was an insert in this originally that I tossed out. Um, so you get punch boards with these tokens that you use and they are uh, double-sided but one side has these um, kings on them in four different colors and the other side is just the color. So first I wondered why didn't they print it double-sided, but as you will see later, these tiles have lots of artwork on them and sometimes it's just easier to spot your color on the game board with just that side up. So that is actually pretty handy. So you get uh, tokens uh, on a punch board for four colors. They also included some Ziploc bags to store them in. Then you get a pack of small cards, so these cards, and they also have a Ziploc bag to store them in. They are very small, and they have this on the back. And on the front, you have several different factions. There are ten different factions, and they all have this colorful artwork. So, as you can see, having uh, one of those uh, kings on it might be a bit unclear if you know there's too much color going on and you can use this side if you prefer. So we got a whole deck of cards that you play with. You get a booklet with the rules. In this case I have the Dutch and the English rules and the rules are just four pages. Basically one page is set up, one page is the explanation of the rules and scoring and two pages are the explanation of all the different factions because they have different abilities. And finally you find some uh, of these reference sheets that you can pass to all players so they have a reference of what all the factions do. And this scoring board where you keep track of your points. That's it, let's set up a game. To set up Claim Kingdoms you put the scoring board at the edge of the playing area then, depending on the number of players, you select the number of factions to be used in the game. For two players, you choose seven factions. For three players, you choose eight. And for four players, you choose nine factions. Then you take all of those cards and shuffle them to form a draw deck. Place it face down at the edge of the playing area. Draw the top card of the deck and place it in the middle of the playing area. Draw the top three cards of the deck and place them face up next to the draw deck. This is the display. Then deal each player one card from the deck and they take that card in their hand. That's their starting hand. Then each player picks a color and places their starred marker over here. That was one marker that has a star on it and a 50 plus on the other side. And you place it on spot zero on the scoring board. Give each player a player aid card, choose who starts the game, and you're ready to begin. The goal of the game is of course to win by scoring the most points. And players score points for each faction they control, which means they have the majority of. So then in addition to any points scored during the game, they add up the worth of that faction they have the majority of and add that to their score. If you score more than 50 points, then you can flip over your chip to the plus 50 side and start at 1 again. 
and if at the end of the game there is a tie in scoring, then the tied player with the most player markers left in their supply wins the game. All factions have a different value, the goblins being the lowest with 4 points and the knights being the highest with 9 points. During your turn you will take 3 steps. First of all you place a card in the playing area like so and you can place them only orthogonal not diagonal. So when it's your turn you place a card then you can optionally use the special power of that card and then you take a new card from the three available. So for example, I would like to have that card and then I flip over a new one. Every time you put down a card, you put one of your markers on that card unless that power tells you to do something else. So let's take a closer look at what all these factions do. So the goblins score one point for each goblin with a marker of your color on it. So every time you put a new goblin down, you just tally up all the goblins that have one of your markers and that's the amount of points you immediately score and put them on the score tracker. So then the dwarves, they score one point for each dwarf in this row and column. Any gaps and face down cards in a line cause a blockade. Trolls score one point for each different faction in this row or column. And you must choose if you want to use the row or the column to score. And again, gaps and face down cards in the line form a blockade. Then the dragons, they score one point per horizontally, vertically and diagonally adjacent card. But again, you do not score points for face down cards. When you play a gnome, you score one point, and then you place a player marker from your supply on a horizontally or vertically adjacent card next to the gnome. If there is already a marker of another player on that card, then you now both control that card. But note, it's not allowed to have two markers of your own color on any card. And you can place a marker on a face down card. With the knights you can remove a maximum of two markers from horizontally and vertically adjacent cards. When you play an undead card you can exchange the marker on this card with a marker on any other card in play. But the power of the card to which you move your marker does not activate. And if there are multiple markers on a card then you choose one marker to exchange with. When you play a giant you flip a horizontally or vertically adjacent card face down. That card is ignored during scoring and when performing special powers of other factions. The special power of that card cannot be used by a doppelganger and if there are one or more markers on this card then return those to the supplies of the corresponding players. When you play a seer then at the end of your turn instead of taking a card from the display or drawing the top card of the deck you may draw the top three cards of the deck and choose one to keep. Shuffle the other cards back into the draw deck. With the doppelgangers, you can copy the special power from the faction of one of the adjacent cards. You can't copy another doppelganger. So that is basically all there is to it. You simply look at your card, you play it. In this case, this player is playing a seer, so he can look at the top three cards of the draw deck and then see if he wants one of those. So let's see, they, uh, maybe they want a doppelganger. So they take that into their hands, shuffle these two back in, and then place their marker. So if this was the blue player, then that player places the marker on that card. So then the third player is up. He's got a zombie. And he can place his card anywhere adjacent. So let's say he wants to play it here. And then instead of just placing his token there, he can swap it with any other cards, so maybe he wants to have the majority of the seers later on because they're worth more points and he swaps those two tokens around. And then that player picks a new card. And a new card is then exposed. And then the third player looks at his card and that player places his card over here, then scores one point for any other faction, so that's two different factions. That player takes his token, oh that's the green player. So then that player has two points already. And if that player doesn't want any of these cards, they can also blindly take the top card of the, top of the draw pile and check what that is. So then it's back 
to the red player. Red player places a card here, decides to flip over this card. That card gets flipped over. This token is returned to the player who owns those tokens. And that player picks a card and a new card is revealed. And play continues like that. And the game ends when a player hasn't got any more player markers in their supply or when the draw deck and the display deck are empty and our, all players haven't got any cards in hand. So that's how you play Claim Kingdoms. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Claim Kingdoms by Scott Alms, published by White Goblin Games. First of all, the presentation is really nice. I love the artwork. Uh, I like uh, the fact that all these cards are almost fully illustrated and even the backs are nicely illustrated. And uh, there are small icons on there that remind you what they do. Uh, if you forgot, there is this very handy cheat sheet which has all the factions and their special abilities listed on it uh, briefly. And if you want to really check out what they do, it's all in the rules as well. So the presentation is nice. They're just cards. They're thick enough. They're nice cards. They're small, so they don't take up that much space because you're going to be laying a lot of those tiles until you run out of this entire deck, depending on the number of players. So if you're playing four-player game, you're using nine out of the ten factions, so it might get uh, a big, the map might get pretty big. Otherwise, there's these uh, cardboard tokens that are of the usual thickness, and you have this uh, scoring tracker, which is also very handy. One thing I do have to mention though is if I look at this track, uh, it's also of a nice thickness. Um, I think the entire packaging could have been a lot smaller because right now it's, it's a pretty big and thick box and all you get is basically a stack of very small cards that is basically very portable and some chips, you know, these, these tokens that you can also put in baggies. The only thing that's big is the, the rule book, but that could have been printed smaller easily. And this, this scoring tile. So I think had they cut this in half and made it foldable, you'd only need a box that's half this size and only this thick just to hold the cards and those tokens. So the box could have been a fraction of this entire box and that would have you know, cost less space on your shelf. As it is now, I'm using this box to store not only this game, but also Claim 1 and Claim 2, the trick-taking games. Because they easily fit in here and more. So this didn't need to be so big, at least not that thick. I mean, it's, it's a huge box for what it is. That's the only gripe I really have with the presentation. Otherwise it looks really nice. Uh, I think this is a very handy board to have to keep uh, track of the scoring. And um, the rules are simple. They are explained easily and quickly. It's just four pages and this is English and Dutch. So half of this is in English and half of this is in Dutch. And it's uh, quite easy to explain. Uh, the thing is you need, just need to learn what all these factions do and that's basically it. And you always have one card in your hand and you're picking one card from the three available and you simply decide do I want to play the one I had or do I want to play one of these three and if I'm playing the one I had which one do I want next. And that's basically all you do. You play it on a strategically uh, advantageous spot and then move tokens around if necessary or place it on your own card score your points and that's it and at the end the person with the most control of the of the factions wins the points on those factions uh, so for example the knights uh, faction has a scoring of nine so if you have the majority of knights you score nine extra points and that's all very simple and straightforward so i like the gameplay i like how it plays with two players, three and four players. I mean, it plays equally well with any player count, uh, two to four. So that's a positive as well. Some of the rules were a bit unclear though. There were some questions that I had concerning some of the factions. Um, for example, where it says with the uh, zombie, you place a zombie card 
and you put the token that you put on that zombie, you switch it around with any other token anywhere, and you can switch it around, but you don't use that faction's special power when your token lands on that. That's all explained very clearly. But the gnome does something equal and also switches. Um, your, well, basically, you place your gnome and your token, and then you put it on in an adjacent and you don't activate that card as well. But sometimes it was explained and in other factions it wasn't. So I was wondering, okay, so why is it specifically explained for that faction and not for the other? Does that mean that the other faction does trigger or did they just forget to list that clearly enough? So the rules could have been slightly clearer for each of the factions. That's basically it. The rules themselves of how to play are clear. It's just that the faction rules could have been a smidge clearer and um, that's it but I've looked things up online and you can always head to their website and ask a question or look it up on board game geek but ideally it should have been perfectly clear from the rules but otherwise I really enjoy this game it's a simple quick tile laying game and it's enjoyable for two two four players and therefore I'm giving it a thumbs up I would recommend trying this at least, and um, that's my opinion on the game. So, thumbs up, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up as well. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.